Chapter 46, A Woman's Sacrifice A year had passed in constructive work that brought me immense joy. I had learned to be useful and had encountered the pleasure of service, experiencing increasing joy and confidence. I hadn't yet returned to my earth home in spite of the immense desire that burned in my heart. I had at times intended to ask permission to go there, but something always seemed to hold me back. Hadn't I received enough help already, and couldn't I always count on the kindness and esteem of all my companions? Consequently, I realized that if it were somehow useful, I would long ago have been sent to my former home environment. Thus, I had to wait for the go-ahead. Furthermore, although I was working hard in regeneration, Minister Clarencio was still the person responsible for my stay in the colony. Laura and Tobias never grew tired of reminding me of that fact. I had met with the benevolent minister of assistance many times, but he always kept silent about the matter. Moreover, Clarencio never changed his reserved attitude in performing duties regarding his authority. Only on Christmas, when I was involved in the festivities in Elevation, did he touch lightly on the subject, guessing how much I missed my wife and kids. After commenting on the joys of the night, he assured me that the day was not far off when he would accompany me to my familial nest. Deeply moved, I thanked him and good-naturedly awaited the time. But it was now September of 1940, and my dream had not yet come true. What comforted me was the certainty of having spent all my time in useful service in the chambers of rectification. I hadn't rested. Our duties went on and on without a break. I had become accustomed to helping the patients, and I had learned how to interpret their thoughts. I kept in touch with poor Elisa, indirectly guiding her to better endeavors. Nonetheless, to the degree that my emotional balance was consolidated, my anxiousness to meet my loved ones once again became more intense. I missed them so much, and it hurt me deeply. In compensation from time to time, I received a visit from my mother, who never abandoned me to my fate, even though she still lived on the higher plains. The last time we had met, she said she intended to tell me all about her new plans. Her maternal attitude of sweet resignation towards the moral sufferings that wounded her sensitive soul moved me profoundly. What new resolutions had she made? Intrigued, I awaited her visit, anxious to know about these plans. During the first day of September 1940, my mother came to the chambers, and, after kind greetings, she told me of her decision to return to earth. She gently explained her plan. Surprised and displeased, I protested. I disagree. Return to the flesh? Why? Why start out again on the road of darkness without any pressing need? Showing a noble expression of serenity, my mother replied, haven't you considered the afflicted condition of your father, my son? For many years I have worked to uplift him, but my efforts have been in vain. Lerte is a skeptic with a poisoned heart. If he persists in such a negative attitude, he will be drawn into deeper abysses. What ought we to do, André? Do you have the courage to see your father again in such a situation without offering him appropriate help? No, I answered, greatly impressed. I would work to help him. But you could assist him from here, couldn't you? Of course, but spirits who truly love don't limit themselves to lending a helping hand from afar. What good are a lot of material riches if we can't share them with our loved ones? Could we stay inside a palace while our children were out in a storm? I can't remain at a distance. Since I can count on you here... I'll join Louisa in order to help your father to find the right path once more. I thought and thought, then replied, I would still insist. Aren't there ways to get around this eventuality? No, it's not possible. I have thoroughly studied the situation, and my hierarchical superiors have agreed to my wishes. I can't raise the lower to the higher, but I can do the opposite. What else could I do? I cannot hesitate for a minute. In you, I have support for the future. Don't lose your way, my son. 
assist your mother when you are finally able to travel between the spheres that separate us from the Earth's surface. Meanwhile, take care of your sisters, who may still be in the darkness of the umbral in active work of purgation. Very soon, I'll be once again in the world. I'll meet Laerte and carry out the work the Father will entrust to us. But how are you going to meet him? In spirit? No, she replied with a significant expression on her face. With the cooperation of some friends, I located him on earth last week. We prepared for his imminent reincarnation without him being aware of our direct assistance. He wanted to escape from those women who still subjugate him, perhaps with good reason, and we availed ourselves of his decision in order to bind him to a new physical situation. Is that possible? What about our individual freedom? My mother smiled, somewhat sad, and explained, There are some reincarnations that occur drastically. Even if the patient lacks the courage, there are friends who help him swallow the sacred but very bitter medicine. As for unrestricted freedom, the soul can only claim that right after understanding its duty and performing it. Besides, it is necessary to understand that the debtor is a slave to what he has committed himself. God created free will. We ourselves created fatalism. Therefore, we have to break the chains we have forged for ourselves. While I lost myself in serious thought, she returned to her previous observations. The unhappy sisters who persecute him don't want to lose him. However, the unhappy sisters who persecute him don't want to lose him, however, and were it not for the divine protection of our spirit guardians, those women could have perhaps deprived him of this opportunity for reincarnation. My goodness, I exclaimed, is that possible? Are we at the mercy of evil forces to that extent? Are we mere puppets in the hands of our enemies? These questions, my son, she explained very calmly, should stop in our hearts and on our lips before we contract any debt and transform our brothers and sisters into adversaries along the road. Never take any loans from evil. And what about those women, I asked? What will become of those unhappy creatures? They will become my daughters over the next few years. You mustn't forget that I am going into the world to help your father. No one is able to help effectively by intensifying the forces of the enemy, just as on earth you can't put out a fire with gasoline. Love is indispensable, Andre. Those who don't believe in this truth go astray, wandering around in the desert. Those who err leave the true road and sink into the swamp. Your father is now a skeptic, and those poor sisters carry heavy burdens in the mud of ignorance and delusion. In the not-too-distant future, I will embrace them in my motherly arms in the course of fulfilling my new life experience. And, as she gazed at the horizons of tomorrow with shining and moist eyes, she concluded, And later on, who knows? I may return to Nasalar, surrounded by other sacred affections, for a great festival of joy, love, and unity. Admiring her spirit of self-denial, I knelt down and kissed her hands. From that moment on, my mother was no longer only my mother. She was much more than that. She was the messenger of assistance, who knew how to transform enemies into children of her heart in order to help them once more to find the pathway of God's children.